Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Math 10C, Chapter 6, Lesson 4, Slope Point Form of the Equation, Part 3. Now, name the form and graph each of these on your graphing calculator. Well, this is slope-intercept form. And that's y1 equals 2 thirds x minus 4. I'm not doing that for you. I've shown you how to do that in class. Practice. Now, it's the next two I need you to practice on. Because, how are you supposed to do this? This is slope point form. Because m is minus 3 fifths. And it goes through the point 3 comma minus 3. Y minus minus 3. Now that's really easy to graph on graphing paper. But on a graphing calculator, it's a pain in the bum. Now to turn into proper slope intercept, you multiply it out. So that is y, y plus 3 equals minus 3 fifths x. Now minus that's plus 9 fifths. And then you would subtract 3 from both sides. And I suppose I should color code it just because, you know, weird like that. I technically am normal challenged, but anyway. So, this is y equals minus 3 fifths x. Now, 9 fifths. One point, ah, I can't do that in my head anymore. I hate this getting old. Now, that is, come on, on. Wakey, wakey! God help me. Way easier than some of the students I have to deal with. All right, minus 3 is minus 1.2. Now, here, let's graph this while we're here. Y equals, clear, negative 3 divided by 5, X, minus 1.2, enter, graph. Now, what did I say here? has a slope of minus 3 fifths, minus 3 divided by 5. Does it go through 3 comma minus 3, this point here? Table of values. Sorry, 3 and minus 3. There we go. Yes, it does. So this slope-intercept form, y equals minus 3, 3 fifths x minus 2, has the same slope and goes to the same point as the slope point form, they're the same graph. All right. Now, the last one is another slope point form, and I'm going to multiply it out. Okay, so 15 times x is 15x. 15 times 12 is 108. 180. Clear graph. Clear. 15 times 15 times 12, 180, yes, y minus 20, plus 20 to both sides, y equals 15x plus 200, oh, poop, now, notice this graph here, m is 15, and the point, minus, minus 12, the point it goes through is minus 12 comma 20. So, y equals, clear, 15x plus 200. Okay. Now, here's the problem. If I try graphing that, I don't see the graph because my window isn't big enough. I look at my table of values and I go, when x is 0, y is 200. So. Ah, window, no, sorry. Minus 10 to 10, ah, 250. Bring up in groups of 10. There we go. Now I can see the graph. And that's the problem. The y equals mx plus b is easy to graph in a graphing calculator, but windows and problems like that. Now, when I was going to say, we said minus 12 and 20 was the one point we know. Yes. Minus 12 and 20 is on both graphs. So we have done this correctly. We've changed it from slope point form to slope intercept form, and we're able to graph them. Now, 
So you see sometimes the slope point form is easier. Such is life. Now, this video is getting too long, so let's just bundle through it. So, find the equation line through the each pair of points. 2, 8, minus 5, 3. Well, we've got to figure out m, slope. Minus y1 equals x2 minus x1. 3 minus 8, minus 5, minus 2. Minus 5 over minus 7, which is 5 sevenths. Now, the only thing we... So we've got the slope here, 5 7 so to screw that up. 3 minus 8 minus 5 minus... That's not. Now, the problem is, which point do I choose? Because as I pointed back here a couple examples back, you will get a different looking equation based on which point you choose. Ah, y minus, do the first one, equals 5 sevenths x minus 2, or y minus 3 equals 5 sevenths x minus, <coughs> excuse me, minus 5. So there we go, our two equations should be identical. Same slope, and they should go... And if you graph them, they should be the same. I'm just not going to because I'm lazy. And I'm getting way too old because I've got to get through this. Now, here's, the, as I said, the slope point form is really good if your b-value sucks or you've got weird, bad numbers. Here's a particularly bad set of numbers. Minus 1.5, minus 8.1 over 7.4 minus minus 2.3. Ugh, I can't do this in my head anymore. So, negative 1.5 minus 8.1 is negative 9.6. 7.4 minus minus with plus 2.3 is 9.7. So that's a horrible looking number. So I'm just going to go y minus minus 1.5 equals minus 9.6 divided by 9.7 times x minus 7.4. Now you can figure out the other point if you want. I'm just getting lazy. And frankly, I think this is getting a little long. Now, let's do a couple of word questions. So water, <coughs> excuse me, leaks out of a tank at a constant rate. Bob notes that after three minutes, there's 400 liters in the tank, and then after 11 minutes, there was only 280 liters left. Model is using an equation and put this equation in the form of a function f. Well, we have slope. Now, normally when we graph this, it's time on the x-axis, volume being the y-axis. So after 3 minutes, it was 400 liters, and after 11 minutes, it was only 280. So, Y2 is 280. Y1 would have been 400 liters. Ah, uh, X2 was 11 minutes. X1 would have been 3 minutes. So this is minus 120 liters over 8 minutes, or minus 15 liters per minute. Let me double check that math because I'm getting old, and nobody's arguing with me when I say I'm old. Be quiet, all of you. Yes. So, Here we go, so that is y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. Um, which point am I going to choose? Doesn't matter. 3 and 400, because I happen to be the first one mentioned. So, y minus 400 equals minus 15 x minus 3. Okay, now, model using an equation. Now, rewrite this in a function, f means we have to rewrite it as y equals or slope point form. Oh, sorry, slope intercept form. 
So what do we do? We multiply this out and solve for y. So this is y minus 400 minus 15x plus 45. Now minus 400 to add 400 to both sides. So it is y equals minus 15x plus 445. Now put that in function notation f of x equals minus 15x plus 445. That's easy to graph on your graphing calculator. All right, now we got much left. All right, so how much water will be in the tank after 25 minutes? f of 25 is solve this equation. Can't do that in my head. Negative 15 times 25 equals plus 445, 70 liters. So it'll be 70 liters left. All right? Now, next question when will the tank be empty? That is zero equals minus 15x plus 445. So Solve for x, subtract 445 from both sides, divide both sides by minus 15 to get rid of times minus 15, and I used to be able to do that in my head, but I can't anymore. Negative 445 divided by negative 15, 29 and 2 thirds. minutes. All right. Just shy of half an hour. All right, now, I know this is getting long, so let's just quickly do this one. Water is being pumped into a tank at a constant rate. It was measured that after four minutes, it was 45.8 liters, and after a while, but nine minutes, 31.3. So, model this using an equation. Put this equation in the form of function f. I'm going to pause the recording. I want you guys to turn this just like we did back here. Turn an equation, then turn it into a function. All right? So, pause the recording. Let's go. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. I got a slope of 5.1 liters per minute plus pumping in, so the volume is increasing. Now, I arbitrarily chose the first point, uh, 4 minutes and 45.8 liters. I got y equals 5.1x plus 25.4. So I hope I got it right. It's embarrassing when I miss mistakes in front of you guys f of x is 5.1x plus 25.4, which leads to a couple of questions. After 25 minutes, Mr. Hildenson, can you... Sorry. Sorry. And function notation, 5.1 times 25 is 127 plus 25.4 is 152.9. And when will there be 250 liters in the tank? Well, that's 250 is 5.1x plus 25.4. And I shouldn't put the x in brackets, but I will just because I can. So, 250, sorry. Minus 25.4. Oh, sorry. So that's 224.6 is 5.1x. Divide both sides by 5.1. And 44.0. Four point zero. Forty-four minutes. Now, that's it for me. I'm going to stop here because this is getting ridiculously long. Any questions, shoot me an email. Otherwise, good luck.